Chinese and Russian naval patrols prompt U.S. military response near Alaska. China's attacking Philippine boat triggers international concern. China's new challenge, foreigners reluctant to visit. Philippines summons Chinese ambassador over water cannon incident in disputed sea. A joint naval patrol involving Russian and Chinese vessels operated off the coast of Alaska last week, prompting the U.S. to respond with force. The incident has raised concerns about an apparent display of military assertiveness in a region that has witnessed heightened strategic tensions. The U.S. Northern Command and North America Aerospace Defense Command officials confirmed that they deployed aircraft and ships to monitor the Russian and Chinese patrol. The spokesperson emphasized that the foreign vessels remained in international waters during their operation. Reports indicate that 11 military vessels from China and Russia were detected, operating near the Aleutian Islands. In response, four U.S. Navy destroyers were dispatched to engage with the foreign fleet. Senators Dan Sullivan and Lisa Murkowski of Alaska revealed they had been briefed about the operation. In their statements, both senators expressed concern over the incident. Murkowski noted, The incursion by 11 Chinese and Russian warships operating together off the coast of Alaska is yet another reminder that we have entered a new era of authoritarian aggression led by the dictators in Beijing and Moscow. A recent U.S. intelligence report states that Russia and China have significantly deepened their defense and economic partnership since Russia invaded Ukraine in February 2022. This growing alliance has been marked by repeated commitments to enhance their military cooperation. Contrary to initial suggestions that the vessels might have entered U.S. waters, the Northern Command clarified that the combined naval force did not appear to breach U.S. territory. It said, Air and maritime assets under our commands conducted operations to ensure the defense of the United States and Canada. The patrol remained in international waters and was not considered a threat. This is not the first time Chinese naval ships have operated in proximity to the Aleutian Islands. Similar activities have been observed in the Bering Sea and North Pacific Ocean for at least three consecutive years. China is facing a mounting wave of international criticism following its Coast Guard vessels firing on a Philippine boat with water cannons in the South China Sea. The episode escalates an already tense situation and could potentially accelerate joint patrol plans by the U.S. and its regional allies. The Philippine military condemned the excessive and offensive use of a water cannon by a Chinese Coast Guard ship which obstructed a Filipino supply boat aiming to deliver essential resources, including troops, food, water, and fuel, to a Philippine-occupied shoal in the disputed South China Sea. CNN reported that video footage captured the large Chinese Coast Guard ship spraying the much smaller Philippine boat as it attempted to reach 2nd Thomas Shoal, a feature in the South China Sea claimed by both the Philippines and China. Philippine Coast Guard images showed the Chinese vessel dangerously maneuvering in front of the Philippine Coast Guard escorts during the resupply mission. In response, the Philippine government summoned the Chinese ambassador to express diplomatic protest over the incident. Shortly after, the U.S., a key ally of the Philippines, condemned China's actions and reaffirmed its commitment to its mutual defense treaty obligations with Manila. U.S. State Department spokesperson Matthew Miller emphasized, the United States reaffirms an armed attack on Philippine public vessels, aircraft, and armed forces, including those of its Coast Guard in the South China Sea, would invoke U.S. mutual defense commitments. Australia, Japan, and Germany also voiced their concerns, describing the Chinese actions as dangerous and destabilizing. This recent incident adds to the long-standing territorial conflicts involving Brunei, China, the Philippines, Malaysia, Taiwan, and Vietnam in the South China Sea. The disputes in this region, a vital global sea route, have remained a source of tension, exemplifying a fragile divide in the rivalry between China and the U.S. Despite international rulings invalidating its expansive territorial claims, China claims the majority ownership of the South China Sea. The Permanent Court of Arbitration in The Hague invalidated Beijing's claims in 2016 
a ruling China rejected. China is experiencing a decline in international visitors, especially from Western countries, leading to concerns about the deepening East-West divide. In the first quarter of 2023, only 52,000 tourists visited mainland China, down significantly from 3.7 million in 2019. This drop in visitors is particularly evident in major cities like Beijing and Shanghai, where foreign arrivals have decreased by more than 75% compared to 2009, according to Xiao Tianhui, the director of the China Tourism Association. There has been a significant decrease in tourists from Europe, the US, Japan, and South Korea. The lack of foreign visitors could have long-term implications, as it reduces opportunities for them to engage with locals, a factor that has historically helped ease geopolitical tensions. Furthermore, the decline in tourist arrivals might also lead to decreased foreign investment in China. Foreign Direct Investment, or FDI, fell from $100 billion in January 2022 to $20 billion in the first quarter of 2023, adding to the challenges faced by China's economy. Experts attribute the decline in visitor numbers to several factors, including the limited availability of flights to China and growing concerns about China's relationship with the West. The U.S. government, for instance, has advised its citizens to reconsider travel plans to mainland China due to worries about arbitrary enforcement of local laws and potential wrongful detention. China's image as anti-Western, particularly anti-American, has also impacted foreign tourists' interests in visiting the country. Friendly Planet Travel, a tour operator based in Pennsylvania, used to bring up to 1,500 tourists to China annually but has yet to book a single tour to China since the pandemic. China's attractiveness as a travel destination has declined significantly for leisure tourists from North America, with only about 40% of the 2019 figures in the first half of 2023. While China has seen some increase in Russian visitors, it hasn't fully compensated for the drop in Western and East Asian tourists. Expatriates who previously acted as a bridge between Chinese society and their home countries are also shying away from China. The perception of China as a distant and somewhat alienated country has deterred many from visiting. In response to the decline in foreign visitors, the Chinese ambassador to the U.S. has suggested increasing travel forums and flights between countries to encourage more tourism exchanges. Although China's economy may not be as heavily reliant on tourism as some other countries, many businesses within China still rely on foreign visitors, and the decrease in arrivals has had economic consequences, impacting livelihoods and incomes for those in the tourism industry. Manila summoned the Chinese ambassador on August 7th to express diplomatic disapproval over the Chinese Coast Guard's use of a water cannon against a Filipino supply boat in the disputed South China Sea. As Associated Press reported, the Philippine military on August 6 denounced the excessive and offensive use of a water cannon by the Chinese Coast Guard vessel to block a Filipino supply boat from transporting more troops, supplies, fuel, and water to the Philippine-occupied 2nd Thomas Shoal in the disputed waters. On August 7 morning, the Department of Foreign Affairs in Manila summoned Chinese Ambassador Huang Xilian to convey a strongly worded diplomatic protest. The U.S., the European Union, and their major allies, such as Japan and Australia, have expressed support for the Philippines and concerns over the Chinese ship's actions. The U.S. State Department said that by firing water cannons and employing unsafe blocking maneuvers, Chinese ships interfered with Manila's lawful exercise of high seas freedom of navigation and jeopardized the safety of the Philippine vessels and crew. It added that these latest actions directly threaten regional peace and stability. Japan said China's harassment and action were totally unacceptable. Australia described those actions as dangerous and destabilizing. The tense confrontation on August 6 was the most recent flare-up in the long-running territorial conflicts involving China, the Philippines, Malaysia, Vietnam, Taiwan, and Brunei. While Americans lay no claims in the disputed waters, the U.S. has frequently criticized Beijing's aggressive actions and sent warships and fighter jets on patrol and military exercises with allies in the region to defend freedom of navigation and overflight, which it claims is in the national interest of the U.S. 
Beijing has threatened Washington with unspecified repercussions, warning the U.S. to stop meddling in a purely Asian dispute.